Hey, Tessa, Ryan, that's right. So now we know here at Holloman Air Force Base, those refugees have arrived. Now they got here on Tuesday as part of Operation Allies Welcome. So just take a look at this photo shared by Holloman Air Force Base. Hey, Tessa and Ryan, that's right. So as you can see, this crime scene tape still up around me and investigators actually still working over my shoulder, if you can see them there, investigating this shooting. Hey, good morning, you guys. So yeah, that's right. So right now we're at the Veterans Memorial Park where a ceremony later today will take place in a observance of Memorial Day. So right now I want to step out of the shot so you can see what's going on behind me. <laughs> hey Tommy, that's right. As you can see, I'm definitely taking advantage of all these indoor activities reopen in Albuquerque. And I'm not the only one, as you can see behind me, a very active trampoline park. Hey Tessa, that's right. So, you know, physically we're here at the New Mexico United store, but theoretically we've been transported to a mini Meow Wolf. You can see behind me, the crowds are already out and about celebrating the launch of this Meow Wolf jersey. Tessa, as you can see behind me, the scene is now clear, but state police are still investigating today. They say for some reason that Artesia police officer rear-ended that semi-truck. Tommy, I just have one word for you. Party. That was definitely the attitude here today. It's 9.30 in the morning when we arrive at Gold Cup Gymnastics, but these athletes have been here since 8 a.m. Hard at work defying gravity. These murals are inspiration. Olympians who trained exactly where these young athletes are standing now. Everybody wants to be an Olympian, especially during the Olympics. But to be an Olympian, you have to be a very, very, very special athlete. You have to eat, sleep, talk gym gymnastics for the sport that you're in. Ed Birch has trained those special athletes for more than 30 years. Athletes like Joey Haggerty, and he's not just a mural on the wall here, but a coach. Returning to the gym where he got his start in the sport, he now holds an Olympic team bronze medal in. It's exciting to see that this is the first step of our journey. Um, and this sport, the difficulty of this sport, it requires a life, almost a lifelong commitment to get to the highest level. Hopefully, they'll start here. Um, I'm the fifth Olympian from this gym, and we're hopefully we get a sixth. Joy competed at the 2008 Beijing Games and now passes his knowledge and experience to young athletes like siblings Corbin and Reed Moyer. I've always been told that uh, like champions are made when no one's looking, right? No one usually is looking when they're at practice for hours at a time. Four hours a day pretty much during the summer and about three and a half hours during the season. It's a lot. There's not a whole lot of free time, but every second's worth it. Every second spent training to be champion. Most gymnasts dream of representing their country at the Olympics, but many kids who train at Gold Cup are even homeschooled to create more time in the gym. But with each Olympic cycle, new fans of the sport are made, and with Simone Biles leading Team USA again, this year the boom will be noticeable. This year, you watch, the numbers are going to increase twice, three times as much. She, she's a good representative of our sport as well, not just because she's a great athlete, but she's also a good spokeswoman for the sport. The award-winning Gold Cup gymnast looking up to her as inspiration for what's possible. I personally love Simone. <laughs> she's one of the best, and she's just incredible to watch and just making new goals every day. It's really incredible seeing all the things she can do, and when I think about the stuff I can do, I'm like, wow, it's really possible to like flip that many times and do that many flips. It's really cool to see. As the Gold Cup athletes train in Albuquerque, watching intently what happens in Tokyo, Joey reminds us not everyone here will be an Olympian, but they'll understand what it means to have the heart of an athlete. The beauty is the sport. It's not necessarily the everything that goes on the wall with it. It's the athletes doing the hardest skills to the best of their ability. And no matter what happens, it's beautiful. Tamara Lopez, KOB4. After five years of waiting and hurting, the family of Cynthia Villegas and her daughters may finally have some closure. Judge Dustin Hunter gave Villegas five consecutive life sentences for the 2016 murders of his wife and four daughters. And I recognize that whatever I do today, it will be insufficient. He says while it doesn't bring the victims back, justice can at least be served to the man who cut their lives short. 
The district attorney says the sentence doesn't come as a surprise to him. A completely appropriate sentence under the circumstances, and and well, it took took us two two hours to to get to the end. Uh, one has to uh, assume that it really was never in doubt. Several family members gave statements today. But in a statement from Villegas, surprising even his own lawyer, he says he didn't commit the murders and gave the name of another suspect. The district attorney's office says this claim is baseless and points to Villegas having years to come up with an excuse to make himself look innocent. There's, there's not a stitch of evidence that this man did not commit uh, this crime. The judge agreeing with the DA says the claim only causes the family more pain. My mother was one of the family members that died on the 9th of June 12th, and the impact of this tragedy has impacted me greatly. Villegas' lawyer declined to comment on the proceedings today. In Roswell, Tamara Lopez, KOB4. At Holloman Air Force Base, it's late in the evening and the sun is setting. This van parks in the visitor's lot. It's passengers, not just any visitors. This family is about to be reunited. This long-awaited hug into dad's arms is worth the wait. This family is part of the Afghan refugee group that landed here at Holloman. These embraces have been anticipated all the way from Idaho, where this man lives and drove to pick up his family. His wife and daughter were visiting family in Afghanistan when they got stuck there. Here at Holloman, most of the refugees are families with kids, just like this one. After being separated, the family is now back together again. They head toward the family car and pile in a family reunited. In Alamogordo, Tamara Lopez, KOB4.